All right, boys and girls, so today we're learning about clay, and I just wanted to start you off by learning the different stages of clay. The first stage is something that we call slip. And slip is usually when I'm telling you, when I give you guys clay, and you're starting to add water, and I say, don't add too much, because I say, it's going to turn into mud. That's exactly what slip is. Slip is kind of like the muddy form of clay. When we look at people who actually make clay from the earth, a lot of times it's like this and they have to get it to be just the right consistency to be able to use it. So right now, it would be hard for me to make anything out of this, although this is awesome to use as glue when you have pieces that are falling apart. So that, excuse me, that's slip. The next, this is a really tiny piece, but this is what we call wet clay. And wet clay is when you can take it and you can turn it into whatever you want to. You can, I don't know, turn it into a little bird if I wanted to start to do that or, you know, I don't know, whatever. So this is the way we love clay to be because we can turn it into all kinds of wonderful little things. Okay, no, I can't stop. Okay, I'll stop. Next is what we call leather hard clay. And leather hard clay is when it's been sitting around. Uh, sometimes we accidentally get leather hard clay because maybe we left our clay out and it started to dry and I co I'll come back the next morning and be like, oh man, I left it out. And so um, sometimes if I spritz it with some water or something, I can get it back to being more like wet. But once it gets to leather hard, sometimes people do it on purpose because I don't have a tool right now, but it's really nice. You can start to carve into the clay and you can do some kind of fun things with it that you can't do when it's wet. The next is very interesting. This is when it's bone dry. When people say this meat is bone dry, that's not a good thing. That means that we have clay here that um, is... Yeah, bone dry. If I take it, it's just going to, do you see how it's just like crumpling down into, into powder? Now, the amazing thing about this, if you hear it, it's hard. It, you hear that? But the very cool thing about bone dry clay is that a lot of times kids will like say, oh, if I take some clay from the art room and I take it home, ooh, I can like make something. The best you're ever gonna get, unless you have a kiln at home, is bone dry, which means it's gonna be, it's gonna be dry. But look what happens the minute you put bone dry clay back into water. Almost immediately, it is going to turn into, oh my goodness, what is it? Oh my goodness, I think that looks familiar. That looks a lot like whack, slip. It turns bait, it goes right back into slip. Do you see how my fingers are getting all muddy? And this was just from taking bone dry clay. You kind of think to yourself, oh no, you know, it's, it's going to stay hard. No, it won't. If you get it wet, or like if you tried, if you made a cute little bowl out of bone dry clay and then you filled it up with water, in about three minutes, you would be have a bowl full of lovely mud. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So let me clean my fingers and get rid of my bone dry clay. I'll pull it out there. He's like, why did you do that? The next one is, this is where things get interesting. This is where you need either fire or you need a kiln. A lot of times when people hear me say the word kiln, they think I'm saying kill or kill ma. This is how we say the word kiln. It has an N on the end of it. And the kiln is a big, wonderful furnace type thing that I have in my classroom. I'm very excited. And it gets very, very hot. It's much hotter than your oven. When you're at home, your oven probably max can get up to about 550 degrees. When I put bone dry clay into the kiln, when I put it in there, because I want it to go through the process where it is going to become as hard as rock, that is called a bisque firing. And when we go to a bisque firing, that means I set my kiln to a whopping 1,945 degrees. My bone dry clay, if I peek in there, will be like red, like the, like the, deepest part of the embers of a fire. And when it comes out, it will be hard, but no matter how much I put it in water, 
no matter how much I could put this into a, a fish tank and if I don't touch it it could stay in there for thousands of years and it will never go anywhere it is not turning back into mud at all it is now ceramic which is wonderful which is where your clay is today now the very last stage, so we have slip, then we have wet, leather hard, bone dry, bisque going into the kiln or into a hot fire. The very last stage is what we would call glaze. Now you don't have to glaze your um, clay. Some people like to just do a bisque firing and leave it at that. But if you like for yours to have color, or in this case, like on this one, to have it have shine, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put glaze onto your bisque fired clay. And the glaze actually has little tiny pieces of glass in it. So tiny, don't think that if you take the glass, glass uh, the glaze and rub it between your fingers that you're gonna cut yourself. It's so fine, you, you, you wouldn't even know, it's like powder. And so the glaze, we're gonna put that back into the kiln one more time. Your clay is like, what, what? time are you trying to kill me and this time when we do it we're going to make it just a little bit cooler in my case i usually set it to 1888 degrees and after brushing on the color and then brushing on that that powdery glass the glass just melts on top of that bisque and before i know it when it comes out and it's super hot and i let it cool i now have a shiny exterior to my clay so these are the steps, and today, lucky you, you are going to be receiving bisque, and you are going to be applying glaze, and then I will be putting it into the kiln one more time to have a glaze firing so it will be nice and shiny. And that's the way it works.